Speaking of college football, we're joined by the head coach of the Auburn Tigers, Gus Malzahn, joins us from uh, what must be a very quiet plains uh, down in Auburn, Alabama right now. Coach, it, it's got to be eerie. I know you're at the office there. It's got to be eerie being around the football office this time of year, and it's dead quiet. It really is, Mike. Uh, of course, you know, this is week seven, so this is kind of the new normal, and we're finally starting to get a routine, but you know, we uh, we want to have our, our players and our coaches back just as soon as possible and try to get back to normal. Gus, the uh, NCAA has been talking about this name, image, and likeness stuff for a while, and the Board of Governors essentially gave it the green light to be voted on by each division uh, for a couple of seasons down the road starting in the fall of 2021. As a college football coach, what's your reaction to this potential new world for the players that you'll have playing for you? Yeah, we've kind of known this was going to happen. This was coming. Uh, to be honest with you right now, I mean, we'll, we'll focus on that as the time comes. We're just really focused on getting our guys back and as soon as we could so we can, uh, you know, start the college football season uh, on time. But we, we've known about this for a while, and we, we, we knew it was coming down, um, and we'll just have to get used to it once everything kicks in. Yeah, so the only question, because we don't know what the specifics are going to be, right? We're two years away from that. Who knows what the world's going to look like? Here's the one thing that has run through my mind when I've heard about this leading up. As a coach, uh, you've got a player in your locker room who's able to make money off name, image, and likeness. However, car dealership, uh, their TikTok following, whatever it is. But then you got another player who plays the same position who's just as good who's not making that kind of money off of that. Will that be a challenge as a coach? to try to manage that situation and still be all about the team, which has been the essence of college football for our entire lifetime? Yeah, it's going to, it's going to be a super challenge. I feel like, um, you know, there'll, there'll be a learning curve just like anything else. Uh, but, you know, I would assume we're probably going to have to maybe hire, hire a new staff person just to kind of help monitor that. Um, you're going to have to, you know, communicate with, mm, yeah. uh, with your players, but, there's going to be some challenges. There's no doubt. But like anything else, uh, there'll be a learning curve for a year or so, and uh, then things will probably uh, settle down. So this has been the learning curve, this new world with the pandemic and trying to do things online with your team and try to build team <laughs> through a screen, which is a little yeah. weird. What have you found have been the positives of this experience for you and your staff and your players? Yeah, I tell you, when you, when you slow down, uh, of course, I've been doing this 30 years and been going fast, been able to slow down and really reflect. And, and really, I've challenged our, our players, our coaches, let's make sure that we come back after this better people, uh, better coaches, better players, better teammates. And, and I just think that we're given an opportunity, a very unique opportunity to reflect and evaluate us as people. So that's been my challenge to our staff, uh, to our players. And like I said, I think right now I told our team, you know, the, the team that comes back in the best mental and physical shape, they're going to have a, a great advantage, too. So that's kind of been our message uh, during this time. Sure, we have a lot of Carolina Panthers fans who are watching us either live or digitally here. The seventh overall pick, Derek Brown, your defensive tackle, is going to be a Carolina Panther, one of a record six Auburn Tigers drafted. You had three in the top 50. Tell the Panther fans what kind of player and person they're getting in their new defensive tackle? They're getting a real special player. He's a dominant player. You're talking about a guy that could have been a first rounder last year, chose to come back uh, to get his degree. Mm -hmm. He wanted to finish with his uh, teammates, which I think says a lot about him. That's rare this day and time, but he's a dominant player against the run, yeah. uh, dominant player against the pass, but he's an even better person. I mean, he's a leader, uh, not just a team leader, but he's a leader in the SEC. Um, you know, he's very well-rounded, um, you know, he's a, a leader in FCA and they're just getting a wonderful person. That's going to be a great positive influence for that locker room too. I was watching you family in there watching the draft and a, a fist pump with pride. What yeah. is it like for you when someone you were in their living room, their kitchen four or five years ago, and now you hear them top 10 yeah. pick in an NFL draft. What's the sense of pride for a head coach yeah. at that moment? Yeah, Mike, that, that's one of the special things about being a coach because, you know, you recruit players, they have goals and dreams. And, uh, of course, you know, his goal was to be a top 10 pick. And for him to be able to accomplish that, uh, it was just a real special feeling for for to make that call probably about five minutes after he got picked. And me and my wife, Christy, got a chance to – talk with him and his parents and just that great feeling that uh, of accomplishment that 
he did he did what he wanted to do and, and he reached his goals and dreams. I'm going to put up a tweet that you put out there almost exactly one year ago. Uh, the New England Patriots drafted Jared Stidham, your quarterback at yeah. Auburn, before that in the fourth round. And you talked about what a steal of the draft opportunity it was for the Patriots because Jared's going to be a successful NFL quarterback for a while. Uh, what have your, has your communication been like with Jared over this time when Tom Brady's been traded? It looks like he might be the guy. Yeah, yeah, we, we've texted a few times. Uh, real excited for Jared. You know, when he got drafted by the Patriots, I just felt like it was a super fit for him. Uh, you know, the system and the stability and everything that goes with that. And to get him that late, I thought was really, really special too. And uh, I think he's set up. He, he's been waiting on this moment. He's a coach on the field. He has the ability to play his best games uh, in the biggest games. And, and he did that for us and led us to, you know, the SEC West Championship in 2017. Remember that pool plunge too, Coach. Uh, you, you know what it takes for guys to go from the SEC to the NFL because darn near, you know, 15 guys on the field almost at any moment in the league end up yeah. going to the NFL. Does Jared Stidham have what it takes if the Patriots drop him in week one and say, you're our quarterback? Does he have what it takes to take that job and run with it? You, you know, I really do. Uh, first of all, he's got the physical ability. He can make all the throws sideline to sideline. He throws a very good deep ball. Uh, like I said earlier, he's a coach on the field. He, he's a guy, he's a gym rat. He studies the game. Uh, he knows where to go with the ball. He understands protections. He can change protections. And like I said, I think one of his biggest attributes is, you know, when we played our biggest games, he played his best game, you know, and of course, you know, we played Georgia and they were number one in 17. He played his best game. Two weeks later, we mm -hmm. played Alabama. They were number one. He played even better. Right. So he's got a unique ability. He's been waiting on this moment. And uh, I really feel strong that he'll be very successful. Those are a great couple of games for Patriots fans and NFL folks to go back and watch because it was up against yeah. a bunch of NFL talent with the Dogs defense and the Tide defense from those years. Yeah. Uh, then when we go back to 2010, you were the offensive coordinator for the national championship when they rolled Toomer's corner after the win for Auburn, and your quarterback was Cam Newton. So you know what it's about at the highest level. Uh, what do you think Cam's future is here as he waits to try to find an NFL team? Well, I will tell you this. Uh, Cam is very hungry. Um, and of course, I've seen that look before, and uh, he's got something to prove. He's determined. So whoever gets him, better buckle up because uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, I believe. Have you been in touch with him? Yeah, we've texted. We've texted a few times. Um, you know, I'm trying to to let him have his space to figure out where he's wanting to go and all that. And uh, but but I'm rooting for him. And and like I said, I've I've seen that look before, and um, it, it's it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Let me wrap up with Auburn football. Uh, I read a couple of comments from some coaches and some athletic directors who have essentially advised the college football folks. Uh, we need about six, seven weeks to get the players on campus to get any sort of a season started, whenever that might be. Is that a window that makes some sense from where you sit? I think so, Mike. You know, we've, uh, we've looked at some different scenarios as a staff, a June 1, a June 15 return a July 1 and a July 15 return. We've not went anything past July 15th, but I do feel strong that uh, that would be a date that we could accomplish what we need to to get our guys ready, uh, you know, for the season. But well, obviously we'd like to be back quicker than that uh, since we didn't go through spring. But uh, July 15th is kind of our, our uh, last date that we've even looked into. Yeah, to get the season started uh, relatively on time. Of course, testing and health officials are going to make those final calls. Thanks for a sure. few minutes, Gus. We've uh, always appreciated your time and watching your offenses over the years. And uh, best of luck whenever we do get going this college football season. Thanks for having me, Mike.